That's why I don't like indie filmmaking. I don't think indie filmmaking is the way to produce great visuals. Full crew production filmmaking is always the way to go, and that's always what we push for over at Knack Knack. The obsessive TP. What's up guys, welcome back to The Obsessive DP, the show where we dive into high level industry standard cinematic production best practices, and we got another tip for you here today. Today we're gonna go over a soda can lighting. Whenever you're lighting a product, you want it to look pristine. You want it to look perfect. There's only a certain amount of cinematic, contrasty mood lighting that you can infuse into it because Usually the producers don't like that and we're not used to seeing that. Think about a billboard, think about McDonald's commercial, think about any food product commercial. Imagine what it's like on a McDonald's shoot. There's no way that food came out of that McDonald's kitchen. It was handcrafted by a master chef and it looks amazing. Usually it's lit pretty even across, nice strong backlighting. Essentially you want the viewer to think that they can literally just pluck it out of the frame and then chow down on it. That is how perfect it needs to look and that's just what we're used to seeing on all these commercials media billboards etc there are so many slow motion soda kombucha hard seltzer commercials out there it's kind of a trend right now and to get a phantom get some food items related to the product and then like throw it at the product and have it bounce off and look all sick in slow motion that was kind of the idea for this shoot it actually happened during quarantine so I literally did this by myself as far as the shooting goes I had to pack up the whole van tear it monitors, V-mount, camera, accessories, C-stands, reflectors, lighting, follow focus, all that stuff had to be brought over to my buddy's house who has a pool, set up, and then it had to be manipulated by one person, which was way more work than it sounds like. It doesn't sound like that much work, but it really is. Think about that. That's at least six or seven rolls on set. DP, AC, cam, op, grip, gaffer, swing, director, at least seven. PA, PA. So it, it was really fun though. I literally just went to the store, got a thing of White Claw, fruit, raspberries, limes, and actually the grapefruit was on location. It was pretty cool. He had a grapefruit tree in his backyard. What was cool about this is we were actually able to turn this into multiple deliverables. Social media stuff that we put up, final full commercial, which actually we did the creative after it was shot, which was interesting. We sat down with Graham, the director, and he ran through and was like, what if we put this on screen? What if we do this on screen? So you look at their website, there's actually no color except for the flavors on the can. We took that creative as well. We kind of stole it from them. Obviously, when you're doing work with a brand, you usually want to stick to their brand guidelines and their style guide. So let's look at the full spot now. There it is, there's a can. There's another can. There's another can. <laughs> and there's the end. White Claw Hard Cell. So. Nothing tastes quite like it. This, this was a really fun shoot. A lot of, of tiny little aspects went to the shoot, so I'm gonna go through those now. Let's check out the behind the scene. Ow, 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 ow. Stupid clip, dude. By the way, how are you guys liking this show? Comment down below if you have an idea or suggestion on how to make it better. We're still working on the background. We're literally just in a van, but we're gonna make this look a little more dynamic, a little more cinematic. What is that thing that's just gnawing at you? Like, how did they do that? How did they like that? How did they lens that? What camera do I need to do this? Uh, all those questions we'd love to answer, so just comment down below. Here's some behind the scenes. Literally, we're just spraying it with a water sprayer, just your basic water sprayer. That's how we get all those droplets on it. You add that extra dose of refreshment when you add those little water droplets on it. Every commercial that's ever aired for soda or hard seltzer or beer always, always has this. Go ahead and find one that doesn't and show it to me because I'd be interested. Um, so this is the setup. This is the camera on a sandbag. You got the ND, we got monitors, you know, dual plate, V-mount, uh, rails, there's a, a remote follow focus so we can just follow focus from a bright monitor. If you guys don't have a bright monitor and you're working outside, get a bright monitor. Uh, it, it's such a pain working with 250 nit monitors outside does not cut it. You literally have to get duvetine over your entire body holding the monitor in order to see it. So we have here, we have a small HD 702 bright, I think it's 1500 nits, and then we have a little handheld 
handheld small HD bolt, which I think is like 2000 nits. And that one, that one's great. The director loves it. The art director loves it because you can just walk around and adjust things in the scene. So we were able to turn it into something like this, which was just all the takes of trying to get the can to land. It really never did. It kind of did at the end when we dropped it from like an inch. But as you can see, it has like this distorted bulge underneath it. So it's kind of still rocking. Here's another angle. As you can see, we've got C-Stand with a flag blocking the direct sun. We did not want direct sunlight on it. Then we have another flag just blocking the camera from the sun too, so it doesn't overheat. And so the UV rays don't degrade the exterior of it. We've got a reflector. So this was interesting. We actually did not shoot this with any light. No lights were used in this setup, which is not normal. If you have the option to have lights, you want lights because what lights provide consistency. The sun is moving the entire day, right? So if you have a reflector, that's moving the entire day. If you have the ability to use a light, please use a light. I think in this case, we would have to use a 4K HMI to really match the light, which was not possible in this shoot. Uh, usually you wanna use an 18K HMI. I've talked about them before. That is the only way you're gonna have a sun in a can. You're actually gonna match sunlight, but we could have had the HMI really close in this case because it's just a small little scene. Let's do the overhead. All right, so let's grab our camera. Flag. Let's do our can. Here's our can. Can is here. So we're shooting straight into it, right? The pool's behind it. Side note, another factor that made this shoot look good, on some shots this aspect was apparent and other shots it wasn't apparent, is that wetting down the pool side made it look so much better. When you wet down a surface, is it out of focus again? I hate you. When you wet down a surface, it makes it darker, which means the sun isn't gonna reflect off that surface as much and be as bright in the frame. You don't want the ground to be this bright, shiny thing in frame because your eyes are gonna go to that immediately. Naturally, as humans, we go to the, we start looking at the brightest thing first. I'd rather be shining. Like I'm looking at my key light right now because it's the brightest thing in my frame. So wetting down a cement or tile or whatever this was made it just darker, which made it actually have a little shiny glint to it as well, which is also great. And then it just darkened it. So your eye wasn't drawn to that. You were drawn more to the product. All right, back to our setup. Camera, product, two by three flag here. We need our reflector, right? We need our key light. So I realize this is more of an indie setup, you guys. This is not what we usually do on this channel. Usually this channel shows a, a setup with a crew, which is what we do 95% of the time. But when you're in quarantine, this is kind of what happens. You know, I, I literally did everything myself. Not ideal. As far as the indie thing goes, I feel like there were several times where I wanted to do something. I was so focused on focusing the lens or making sure the ND was right, making sure the angle was right, making sure the product looked good, making sure the fruit falling into frame looked good, making sure that the light was blocked and the light was reflected correctly. There's just too many spinning plates when you're doing this yourself. That's why I don't like indie filmmaking. I don't think indie filmmaking is the way to produce great visuals. Full crew production filmmaking is always the way to go. And that's always what we push for over at Knack Always. This was really our setup. I mean, we had a flag shading this camera as well. The sun was setting. It wasn't set, but I just wanted to show you where the sun was so that you can see kind of what was going on here because the sun was over on this side of the pool, right? So it was shooting into our reflector. Boom. And then that sunlight was filling in the other side of the can. So I did try a setup where it was a little more contrasty. Compare the grapefruit can to the lime can. On the lime can, I directed the mirror board a little bit off, a little bit more behind the can, not directly straight on the fill side. Because really, really what we had is the sun was still kind of hitting this side as a key. This was kind of a fill still, but they looked even because you usually want to light a product even i wish i had a backlight that would be awesome i didn't have another reflector or a 4k hmi which would have been perfect but you can see that it doesn't look as good sometimes it's hard to tell when you're doing a billion things at once you're looking at a small monitor i tried to make that lime can look a little more contrasty a little more cinematic a little more high end it actually backfired the even look worked best for this can i believe it didn't work because that's just what we're used to we're 
used to products looking perfect, nice, even light, popping out of the background, makes you just wanna stick your hand in the TV and grab it. That is why even lighting works on a product. One last note, a camera note, the red actually doesn't work super well when we're going with slow motion. I think these were at about 190 frames per second. I could have gone full 240. The problem with 240 is you drop down to 2K and you're probably like, Ryan, that's not that bad. It's just 2K. That's what's all over the internet. It's different in this case because the red only uses that many pixels on the camera. You think the sensor is this big, right? 8K is this big on the DSMC2 Helium camera you're only using 2k it crops in to use this much of the sensor which also means you're only using this much of the lens you just get visuals that aren't as clear if you were using the whole sensor at 2k and the whole lens at 2k I think it would be much clearer image that you get but it's just a downside of the red universe right now hopefully DSMC 3 will fix that because slow motion we usually don't go higher than 120 usually stick around 90 because you're using much more of the sensor you're at 6k 5k at that point getting all the way up to 200 frames per second you gotta get down to 2k and if your lens isn't very sharp you're gonna see it in the final product i thought that these were pretty sharp i did some sharpening in posts you also need much more light when you're working with slow motion outside it wasn't that big of a deal i actually still used nd but if you're like on a stage shoot shooting a phantom at like a thousand frames per second you need massive hmis to be able to compensate because the shutter speed has to go so fast to keep up with the smooth motion that we're used to so that's all i have for you today hope it was helpful I hope if you have a beverage shoot coming up, this is going to be very helpful for you. One thing to note is that this wasn't a reflective can. It wasn't a bottle. Bottles have a totally different approach because you actually want to light them from behind to light the liquid inside. And then there's more reflection you want to deal with. You want to get a line. You want to get maybe some bokeh. There's a totally different approach. But if you're dealing with a can outdoors, this is a pretty quick and simple setup. The things that I would have probably changed is just had more black wrap more duvetine, more wet down, and then dealt with the background more because the background just kind of fell off because it was in a shadow. You would light the background and then light the back of the can. That's how I would change this. Hope you learned something. Please subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions, anything you want us to cover. Stay obsessed.